Hello. 1.8b wants us to look at the hazard management cycle, but it wants us to do so as a theoretical framework. So the first job is to make sure we understand what a theoretical framework is. And all that is, is a group of ideas that help us understand a particular event. So if we take those two aspects and put them together, all we really need to do is look at the hazard management cycle and try to understand how far it informs us about the management of a tectonic event. Or another way of putting that is, does it help us judge the level of success? Now, the framework itself is shown on page 58 of the Frost textbook. And what it does is divides the disaster into three stages. And each stage is really significant in determining what actually happens in, during the event and also helps us understand the success of management in any particular area. So the first stage is the pre-disaster, which is all about proactive preparation, which reduces the disaster itself or maybe even prevents the disaster. The key word in that is mitigation, which we'll come to later. But it's about preventing harm. Then we have the response, another key area of management, which is about saving people, providing assistance, which can reduce deaths and more suffering and so on. And the post-disaster stage is about rebuilding the area that might be putting houses back up, restoring infrastructure services. But all of that then might lead back into pre-disaster planning, because if you build the buildings back better, you may well help prevent the next one, or at least mitigate it, and so on. So to deal with this, we just need to structure our notes in such a way that we can use this theoretical framework to judge management and understand the overall impacts. So the first thing to, to be clear on is the detail of the mitigation and adaptation strategies actually put in place are all done in 1.9. So in this particular set of notes, we don't need the details. We just need an overview of how we're going to approach questions, which ask us how good the management hazards and hazard cycle is in understanding and judging the success of govern governments or understanding the um, overall impact. So the first thing is, clearly good at is it helps us understand the human response to the physical event. But also within that, it helps us look at the role of development and governance, because um, if we look at um, part of those few of those stages, if resources are in short supply for whatever reason, like we've got poor buildings or the, the disaster relief effort is restricted by the lack of resources, that could be down to development. Equally, though, it could be down to a poor governance and um, decision making beforehand or during in terms of allocation of those resources. So it can help us understand all of that. The other thing about this model, which you could argue, is it's a little bit weaker on understanding the nature of the event itself and the local geographical fact factors which you've studied before. However, taking that a little bit further, um, if the government and governance of different institutions have done a decent risk, risk assessment in the um, beginning stages, in this pre-disaster stage, then they, they should have a good idea of the physical events which they may face. So if there's a complete failure, it might be due to governance and problems there, or it might be due to a lack of resources to deal with the event. You must remember even the most well-resourced governments sometimes fail at this, such as if you look at the Fukushima uh, power plant in Japan, the tsunami wall was not built big enough. They decided it was too expensive to do that, given the frequency of a tsunami of that size. So this model would help us understand what happened there in Japan in the pre-disaster stage, because that one of the reasons Fukushima had so many problems was a weakness in that pre-disaster stage. So to um, 
The next stage in our note taking, once we've established what this is about, is looking at the three stages and discussing what each stage reveals in this framework about the success level of governance. So for example, the pre-disaster stage does reveal how proactive the government has been. And then explain using some of the ideas on the model why that's the case. And then you can do a similar thing for response. There's a really good bit on the response and the post-disaster part on page 57 of Frost. And that will lead us to exam questions like these. So that I think that's kind of questions are most likely to assess the use of hazard, the hazard management cycle in understanding the management of tectonic events. So you'd look at the overall idea, then you'd look at the different stages to try and determine in your opinion, how far it helps you actually understand the events you're looking at. And you would support that with some of the examples you already know. The other thing it might ask you to do is look at this theoretical framework. How far does it help you understand the impact? And again, you'd use a very similar approach, possibly emphasizing a little bit more about how it doesn't really focus on the nature of the physical event or the geographical factors, but it is just focusing on on what actually is done by the human population about the event that's faced. Okay, I hope that helps.